Elbow protocol is an AP elbow. We do an external oblique, which is at the 45 degree angle, and we do a lateral. I want you collimated into an 8 by 10 size, 40 inch SID, and again, examples for technical factors, CR to DR. AP elbow, elbow the arm is fully extended. Epicondyles parallel to IR, center to mid elbow joint, and ideally the upper extremity is on the same plane. So raise that table up to a comfortable level for that patient where their shoulder to wrist are on the same plane. What are we evaluating on an AP elbow? The radial head, neck, and tuberosity are slightly superimposed over the proximal ulna. The elbow AP oblique elbow in lateral rotation or external rotation is a 45 degree oblique. It allows you to visualize the radial head, neck, and tuberosity free of the ulna. A way to help you guys remember anatomy, I always remember the capitulum is centered over the radial head. How I remember this is the cap sits on the head. That's just a little anatomy trick for you. The internal oblique elbow, you guys will not do protocol-wise at our clinical site, but it can always be on your board exam, so we need to make sure we go over it. This view is to see the coronoid process, trochlear notch, and medial trochlea. The forearm is pronated 45 degrees, so it's internal, right? And it's going to demonstrate fracture, fractures of the medial epicondyle and the coronoid process. Lateral elbow is really similar, similar to that of lateral forearm. You want a 90 degree bend. You want the upper extremity all on the same plane. Epicondyles are now perpendicular to IR. And ideally you want to center to the mid elbow joint. How do you evaluate the lateral elbow? Some of the visual keys, the epicondyles are superimposed, just like that of the lateral forearm. You can see how they're superimposed over each other here and both in this image here. You have a clear joint space for the elbow. The electronon process is in profile. And they refer to these three concentric arcs. That's more in, in detail. Your radiologist might look at that more than you will. Ideally, right now for you guys, I'm looking for you to understand that this is an open joint space. Trauma elbow. If your patient has had trauma and they're not able to fully extend for the AP elbow view, you're going to have to do it in two parts. One with the humerus parallel to your imaging plate centered at the elbow joint. And then the second one with the forearm parallel still centered at the elbow joint. These two together give you your AP elbow. So the AP elbow and a trauma elbow is cut into two. And this is what it'll look like when the humerus is parallel here because the forearm is raised and not flat to the imaging plate, you can see how it's distorted on the image here. This image here of where the forearm is parallel to the imaging plate, you can see that it's not distorted. The humerus is raised off the imaging plate and you can see where it's distorted there. Common elbow fracture. Um, I never remember how to pronounce this. <laughs> Montasia fracture, proximal a fracture proximal third of ulna with dislocation of radial head. See how it's kind of popped out here? It's normally superimposed here, and the fracture is right here. The supracondylar fracture is the most common elbow fracture in children. It's the fracture of the distal humerus above the humeral condyle. So you can see how it's shifted off here on the lateral, and on the AP here, it's really difficult. It's just sort of shifted completely off. Your textbook identifies an acute flexion elbow. I've never done one of these, but it's in your book, so we'll make sure and go over it. I want you to make sure to review this anatomy. Know the anatomy of the elbow in an AP position. Know the anatomy of the elbow in a lateral position. Here again are the three concentric arcs identified. That's how you evaluate for your lateral, lateral elbow positioning. Know your joints, type of joints. The elbow fat pad stripes are demonstrated here. So posterior fat pad, anterior fat pad, supinator fat stripe here. 
it may the fat pads again are usually an indicator of a fracture. There's a small, minimally displaced radial head fracture here, and then you'll see this, we call it a sail sign. It kind of swoops out here. There's a fat pad sign. And that rounds out elbow.